Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. If you remember in the last episode, we went through this real quick. We did a compression check. We scoped the cylinders and we tried to fire it up. It did fire up. It did pump a little bit of water, which we were good to see, uh, or which was good to see, but it wouldn't stay idling, would it? I had to keep you know, uh, switching my primer level over to pump fuel in there to keep it going. I even tried to cover up, you know, the holes of the carburetors to suck some fuel in, kind of choking it out a little bit, see if I suck some crap through there, because I did get a little whiff of bad gas when we did pump the fuel through. We also, if you remember, had to tighten up some fittings and, you know, maybe we, this could use some redoing as far as the fuel lines go. You don't want to be sucking air anywhere because then it won't run properly. Don't forget my used outboard buying guide is for sale on Amazon right now for $20. For a limited time, I am offering a free half hour session over the phone. It's a $250 value to help you with a boat you're looking at, a motor you're looking to buy for your boat. Take this with you. It is not a great detailed guide. It is a quick reference guide with the high points of what most people miss when they go out and look at something that they're buying and end up saying what? The best two days are the days I bought it and the days I sold it. It doesn't have to be that way. You can get a lot of details here in a quick reference guide to bring with you and some tools that are listed here. Make sure you have those tools with you so that you can do those tests. And you can certainly, when you buy this, give me a call. We can talk on the phone and we can, I can give you some advice on what specific motor you're looking at and what you need to look for. So next we're going to get into this. We're going to pull these carbs off of here and see what they look like inside. Let's dive in. So a couple things I like to do before I start something like this. First, I clear out a spot on my bench and have a nice clean rag down. You don't want to get any extra dirt if they're already dirty, right, in there. And it's kind of precise, these carburetors, so we want to make sure we keep things clean. Then I'm going to take a look here of what I need to disconnect. I see some throttle linkage. As a matter of fact, I see throttle linkage that's not completely connected all the way, which is not helpful, right? That's going to come right off of there. Actually, it's not connected at all, not even at the top. So uh, that, that, that's one of the problems we have to make sure we solve. I'm also going to get into this primer solenoid. I do have a little kit, so I'll be able to show you that, how we rebuild that. And I kind of look, how am I going to get my wrench in here? Do I need to take this piece off? Will that make it easier? And looks like I've just got two bolts for each one. I'm going to disconnect my fuel lines. I'm not going to be too concerned about breaking them because they're kind of crummy already. So we're probably going to replace those. So let's get into this. I'm pretty sure these are all half inch here. Looks like I have good access to these. Won't be too difficult to take this off of here. So I'm going to go ahead and start at the top, get that fuel line off. And there's also a primer line on this too. So we're going to pull that off. So we'll have to address that. This is the one I put a new uh, tie strap on. So of course it's going to be tighter. But look at the end of that fuel line. It's kind of crummy. I'm going to go ahead and replace that. And we'll start with the tar top carburetor. Get this off. Get it on the bench and see what it looks like when we pull that bowl off. So typically most of the dirt and buildup is going to be down in the bowl where you would find it first. We're still going to take the top off. Then we'll decide. A lot of these gaskets are rubber, neoprene, whatever you want to call it. Um, and a lot of times they're reusable. We kind of hope that we can reuse them, but if not, we can go ahead and get carburetor kits for this. Parts VU maybe, or Boats.net. I prefer Pro Marine uh, down in Florida, but sometimes Boats.net can get it here a little faster. And let's face it, I'm not a very patient person. When I need parts, I want to get stuff done. So let's get this carburetor off of here. I feel like it's all, they've had them off because it's kind of loose. Usually if it's been on there for a period of time, the carburetor will kind of stick, the gasket will stick. And we're going to dump gas out. Gasket doesn't look bad. I'm going to take a jar over at my bench and dump this fuel out into the jar. Also, there should be lock washers on here that are not on here. I can take my flashlight, sign it in here, or my little camera and stick it in there. And I can look at the reed plates. I can't see both sides, but I can see enough to see if they're broken or anything like that, just as a precaution. So let's get this over to the bench. I'll go ahead and take a quick look at this carburetor first before we get them all off. I did dump the fuel out into a jar. 
just to save it and make sure I don't dump it and have gas all over the place. So it looks like we got four screws here. Many times these car ever carburetors are pretty simple. Sometimes the t plastic tops warp a little bit and you'll suck air. So we want to make sure we inspect it really closely. Also, if you remember, the followers break apart and that'll throw it off a little bit. So we, we have those I have in my little kit. I save those because it's a common problem with these Evinrude's. Now let's see what's inside this bowl. And it has been apart because it popped right off. Usually it's stuck. So I don't, I mean, there's a little bit of dirt in the bottom of that. Not enough that I could even show you on the camera. So there may have been dirt in the fuel system in that uh, VRO slash fuel pump. Let's see what our float looks like. Now our float is a little off, not severe. It's kind of hanging a little low as if it would provide too much fuel. So let's go ahead and take that out. I can smell the, the bad gas now. So this definitely was not thoroughly cleaned. We can look closely at the needle to see if the needle is worn. Now I do have a little ring around it, but is that ring worn or is it just a dirt spot? Which is why I put my cheaters on. It definitely has a ring around it, but it wasn't overflowing, so we know it seals off, but now I'm feeling a little edge on it when I kind of rub it with my screwdriver. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking my little screwdriver and just feeling it. I can do it with my fingernail if I take my gloves off too. I'm not a big fan of getting gas and stuff on my hands. There's a little gasket here. Now let's take the top off. See what this looks like. If you remember, when we pulled the hose out that goes on the top, which is our primer. Now it wasn't leaking when I pushed the primer. But then again, it should have been pulling that fuel in as well, so it might have been sucking air there. Let's see what it looks like. Don't see any dirt immediately, but I can smell the, the bad gas, that's for sure. So I think what I'll do here I have some of that uh, carburetor cleaner that you can dunk these in. I'm going to take this plastic piece off of here that holds the uh, linkage. I'm going to pop that out. I'm going to take the gasket off of this. I'm going to go ahead and remove this seat because it has a little fiber washer on it. I don't want anything rubber or plastic when I put it in there. and. There's a little bit of stuff down in there, nothing major, but I'm going to go ahead and soak this in that carburetor cleaner overnight, and then we'll pull the other carbs off and see what they look like next. So we have all the gaskets off, all of the plastic pieces removed, and what we're going to do is we're going to soak this in this carburetor parts cleaner. You can pick up this up at any local auto parts store has them. I might be able to fit two in the basket, but sometimes you can just do one at a time. It is a period of time, if you read the instructions, of course, the longer you leave it, depending on how crappy your carburetor is, if it's gunked up and it's, you know, it has some solidified stuff in there. This one's not too bad, so I'm not too concerned about leaving in there too long. I'm going to do them one at a time. Uh, you've already seen me take apart one. All three of them are the same, so I'm going to do that. If I do find something that stands out, I'll definitely make sure I record it for you guys so you can see it. And then we're going to take that carburetor and put it in our parts washer. So I just have a simple Harbor Freight parts washer. You guys, if you've watched my channel, I don't spend crazy amount of money on tools. But there's something I learned recently from my friend Sean, who has an auto parts uh, or a uh, auto repair shop up in Westfield, is that the safety clean, uh, I guess let's say there's nothing safe about safety clean. Uh, I don't, I did not, was not aware of that. I used it for many years. Now I always wear gloves. You, you see me wear gloves all the time and rubber gloves when I'm cleaning parts in there. And I believe it's mineral spirits based. I'm, I'm not positive of that. I know that 
if mine evaporated over time, because I don't use it that much, you know, I would add a little mineral, mineral spirits to it. So we want to be careful of that. We want to make sure we don't have things soaking into our skin. So that's what we're going to do. And when we get ready to wash them up, we'll show you what we got. So since I learned that that safety clean is really not healthy for you, and it's, uh, I, I heard it was outlawed. Listen, I don't know all the truths behind all of these things, but it comes from a reliable source, a good friend of mine that I trust. So I got away from it, got rid of that stuff, and we went ahead and bought some Aussie juice. That's what he uses. Uh, it is also biodegradable. So we like that as well. We don't want to, we want to make sure we're not killing our environment with the stuff that we use. So let's get into this. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, just have to get this prepped here and I'll show you how this little kit works first. Not too sophisticated here. We do want to make sure we put our gloves on and there's a little basket in here and the fluid is thick and you know I can see in the bottom of my basket some dirt because of over the years of the carburetors I've cleaned. I don't know how many years I've had this for but we just kind of dunk it in here. and let it soak. Now I'm going to take the bowl and put it on top. And then we'll just let this soak for a little while and then we'll flush it out with our Aussie juice when we get it out of there and we'll do one carb at a time. Like I said, I'm going to let you know when I find things. <clears throat> Second carburetor, not a big deal. Didn't look bad. Third carburetor, there is a little bit of dirt in the bottom of this bowl. But more importantly, look at that cavity filled with oil. It looks like two-stroke oil. I see it running out now when I tip it over. So this is in this orientation. So that is where my pickups are or my small holes are for my idle. But even more importantly, take a look at this mixture screw. It is cranked all the way in. So this tells us somebody's been playing, couldn't get this to run right. So now we're going to have to look up in the book to see how that gets set. I'm going to take all the mixture screws out. And what we're going to do is make sure that the point did not get buggered up on the ends of those. I don't, I don't believe there's a seat in there that's replaceable, uh, replaceable, so it may be a little tricky to get this set up right if someone jammed it in all the way. So let's take that first one out and see what it looks like. So you can actually see where the needle goes in through this hole when you take the top cover off. Well, it wasn't cranked all the way in, so that's good. And I'm probably going to have to put my cheaters on to look at this closely, wherever my cheaters are. Because I want to check the needle, the end of the needle on this, to be sure it didn't get damaged from somebody cranking it all the way in. And it did not. It, it looks fine. But I do have a little bit of dirt in there. Nothing crazy. We'll leave that out. And we'll finish cleaning these up. And then we'll see how it goes. So in our next episode, we're going to reassemble these carburetors because I'm going to have them all nice and clean. I'll show you what I'm going to do in my parts washer. I'm just going to clean them up. I may use a little brake cleaner. And I have some gum out carbon choke cleaner that I'm going to spray through there just to make sure everything is cleaned out before we start assembling this. So please like, subscribe, send any comments that you have. And pretty soon that key's coming in for that four stroke and we're gonna start testing that so that we can do side by side. But we may get this running in the meantime. We'll see how it goes. Have a great day.